Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Galaxy. Hope you are doing good. And first of all, happy new year to all of you. Okay, so today in this video, we will going to discuss some of the basic questions. Uh, if you are a fresher and going for a sales force interview, so these questions can help you out. So let's quickly discuss all the basic questions related to uh, sales force. And the questions are covered from the admin part. And for the development part, like triggers and all, we will cover uh, all these questions in the next video. Okay. So let's start with today's video. Here we have our very first question and this is a very basic question. It says what is Salesforce? Okay. So there are so many points to discuss there to define the Salesforce. So uh, you can also add few of the points like Salesforce is a cloud-based software company that provide businesses with tools that help them provide more prospect, provide a higher level of service to their customers. And it is a cloud-based CRM that is customer relationship management platform that enables business to manage customer data, sales, operation, and marketing campaigns. Okay. This force allow users to customize and create custom objects, fields, processes, and reports, and integrate them with the other uh, with other software products. So like this, there, uh, there are so many points which you can uh, add here in the Salesforce and whatever you have learned from past few days in the Salesforce, like we can create uh, automations there, the different automations we have like process builder workflows and flows and all which are provided by the Salesforce itself. So if a person is like not having any uh, knowledge about the coding, so he can easily automate the thing using these standard automations okay tools and like this that the salesforce provides some standard object these are account leads and all and according to the requirement we can also create our custom objects and fields okay so like this you can add points here in this salesforce to define this salesforce okay so the next question comes here is what are the objects in Salesforce and how many types of object we have in Salesforce? So Salesforce objects are the database tables. Okay. And uh, using these objects, we are able to store our data and it is specific to a particular organization. So based on our requirement, we are able to store our data in these objects. Okay. So Salesforce offer various type of objects. Like we have custom object, standard, uh, standard object, big objects, external objects and the platform event, but mainly two objects are used or asked here that is the standard object and the custom object so standard objects are the one which are provided by the salesforce itself like if you open or log in in your salesforce account so on the header side you will see that the few tabs are available with the different objects like account leads opportunity okay so these are the objects or we can say uh, these uh, database tables using these objects we are able to store our data or our rows in these objects okay custom and objects are the one which are created by the users as per the requirement okay so these are created as per our requirement like we have some uh, requirement in which we need to store the data in some other object so what we will do we will create a uh, object and the fields to store the data in it okay so if you want to go more in deep with this salesforce object so you can uh go through the video which uh, was earlier uploaded on the salesforce object so link is uh, added in the description section so you can check it out from there okay and what is salesforce also the video is already uh, there in the channel so you can also check out that too so the next question come here is what uh, what is the difference between or what are master detail and the lookup relationship so these are the two relationship which we use most in our salesforce okay so you must know about the difference between both the relation and when to create or when to go with which relationship okay so the relationship is used when we want to connect two objects okay and want to create relationship like many to many or many to one or one to many okay so when the condition come here like we want to create a relationship that is from one to many then we will talk about these two relationship that is the uh, master detail and the lookup relationship okay and the difference between both is this that is one is tightly coupled and another is loosely coupled like if in case of master detail relationship here in this relationship one is created as a parent and one is created as a child okay so the one which is parent is going to have more than one child in it so this is how we will going to create one to many okay and if in case if any condition if we delete the master record then all its related child record will also automatically get deleted so this is how it is known as the tightly coupled okay but in case of lookup relationship what happens so here uh, one is uh, master and another is uh, 
child but what if you delete the master record then its child record will not be get deleted because they are binded with the lookup relationship that is loosely coupled okay, okay so this is the one difference and next difference is like uh, if we want to create the child of record then here in case of master detail then the parent is mandatory and in case of lookup relationship parent is not mandatory okay so here uh, if we talk about next is if we talk about the sharing setting or the sharing rule so here in the master detail relationship all the permissions are inherited from the parent itself and in lookup relationship it's not mandatory so you can also change the permissions for the uh, child object in case of lookup okay so if if you go through the OWD setting so here what you will see in case of master detail relationship for the child object you will not going to have any permission and it will going to have the same OWD which is set at for its parent okay but in case of uh, lookup relationship you will have the access to change the OWD for the child object okay so these are the few differences of, about this master detail and the lookup relationship and if again you want to know more in depth about this and want to know how to create them you can again watch out the video which is already uploaded on this relationship on the channel okay and here one more point that is uh, if there are two objects then we can create maximum 40 relationship lookup relationship on an object and two maximum master relationship can be created on a object okay uh, and if you are like suppose if you have already created the two master detail relationship on an object then only 38 more lookups you can create on this object okay total you can create 40 relationship in which two are for maximum master detail and 38 or 40 are for lookup relationship if no master relationship is available then you can create 40 relationship there okay so the next question come as the junction object okay and so this is also the maya so this is also the most important question which is frequently asked in the interviews what is junction object and can you give me the examples of uh, or can you give me the example of objects which are junction object and provided by the salesforce or we are already having in their salesforce or okay so can you tell me what are the junction objects which are provided by the salesforce so looking forward for your answer in the comment section okay let me know the junction objects we have which are provided by the salesforce okay now let's talk about the junction object so junction object comes in picture when we want to create or when we want to connect two objects with many to many relationship okay like suppose there are a and b two objects and in between both the objects i want to create many to many relationship that is a can have as many as of b same b can have as many as of a okay so directly this is not possible no such relationship is there like master detail or lookup we can directly create one to many but for to create this many to many we do not have any such direct relationship so what we will do in this case the third object comes in picture and this third object is known as the junction object okay so this uh, this third object we create the uh, lookup or the master detail relationship with the other two object that is a and b okay on the third object that is on c itself we will going to create one uh, lookup with the a and one lookup with the c so this is how we will going to connect two different object with many to many relationships so the next question is what are static and the dynamic dashboard okay so if we talk about this static static dashboard what happens here if a user this will going to work based on the permissions and the uh, based on the permission which is user is having okay so like suppose if a user is not having permission to see a particular object records and all then the and in the dashboard that particular object is added so the user the dashboard is not going to be visible to this user okay but if, what if we want to show this dashboard to the user but not the record so in this case we will move to the dynamic dashboard in this what will happen regardless of the permissions in the salesforce you have it will going to show you the dashboard of, of that particular objects or, or of that particular records okay regardless of the permissions okay but only the dashboard not the records or the object okay so if there is a condition like uh, if you have created the uh, dashboard on the opportunity which is showing the total number of clause one or the clause lost opportunities okay and the user is only having the permission to view only its uh, opportunities which are owned by this particular user 
So in this case, you can create the dynamic dashboard, which will going to show them the uh, opportunities of all the users, data of all the users, okay, and can show the total number of uh, close one and the close loss opportunity. But in case of static static dashboard, dashboard will not going to be visible to this user. Okay. So the next question come here is what are the governor limits? Okay. So as we all know that the Salesforce work in the multi tenant environment. Okay. So here. Uh, equal resources are shared to all so any of the resource do not monopolize the shared uh, resources for which the sales for supply these governor limits that is a box is given to all and in under the, this is the limit and under this box only you can perform all your automation or the processes okay so do not to monopolize these shared resources the sales force uh, and provided this governor limits like if you want to perform any of the dmls uh, like uh, and the different governor limits we have to perform different dmls in one transaction number of soql or the sos and we can make under one transaction so for all these things the total governor limits are imposed are added okay so the next question come here is what are the things that you can do to prevent the governor limits okay so what are the different factors or what are the different points which can help us to perform our uh, automation and all our processes under the governor limits and it we so that we should not hit the governor limits okay first thing is your code should be bulkified okay and this also kind of comes under the good practices or the best practices to write a code so your code should be bulkified okay instead of you performing transaction for each of the record perform it for all the records okay the next come here is do not to perform any sql or the dms under the loops okay if we do this under the loops then for each record it will going to utilize the dml or the sql and in case if you will get more than records and where it hits the dml lim uh, governor limits for the dms then you will going to get an error okay so your code should be bulkified. Do not to use these uh, queries and the DMS under the loops. Okay, and if you are working for more than fifty thousand record, then move to the batch instead of moving to the synchronous apex. Move with the asynchronous apex. Okay, and if you are making any callouts and all, use the future methods. Okay, so it will not going to wait for the process. It will going to work asynchronously. Okay, so these are the few point which you should keep in mind. So it so your code or your processes should not hit the governor limits. So the okay. next question come what are profiles and the permission sets? Okay, or a user can have multiple profiles or a multiple permission sets. Okay, so profiles and permission sets both will going to provide you the sets of permissions which we can provide to a user okay so if we talk about the profile so it is that if we and if we have a user so if a, if we assign a user with a profile then this profile will going to define what this user can do in this salesforce org okay whatever the permission you will going to give on this profile the user will going to able to see all these things like suppose for account object for multiple objects i have given the permission like for the multiple apps, for multiple objects, for my record types, page layout fields, uh, for record type page layouts, okay, for login access and all, for all these different things you can add in this profile and provide this profile to a user, okay. So automatically this will going to decide what a user can do in this Salesforce or using the profiles, okay. And only one profile can be assigned to a single user, not the multiple profiles now next if we come to the permission set in case of permission set we will again will going to have the same set of permissions which we are going to get from the profile but here using the permission set we are able to enhance the permissions of the users okay like suppose we have two users and two users are having both the uh, the same profiles okay but now i have a requirement to provide more access to one of the user and this object access should not be visible to the another user with the same profile so if i directly give access of this particular object on the profile then both the user will are going to get the access for this object but i don't want this i want only one user should going to have the access for the particular object so in this case we will going to move to the permission sets and in this permission set i will going to add the access of this particular object and assign this permission set to the user okay so user which is having the access of or assigned with the permission set will going to have more access 
which are added in this permission set okay and the another user with the same profile and not assigned with the permission set will only have the less access uh, as compared to this another user with permission set okay and permission sets can be assigned multiple to a single user single user okay so be as because we are using these permission sets to enhance the access so the next question come here is what are the record types and the page layout okay so on this already a video is shared on the channel okay. so you can directly go through or watch out this video and you will going to get how we can care and in this video it is a uh, totally explain how we can create uh, what is the difference between both okay all the points are covered in this video okay so you can directly watch out this yes. video so the next question here come is what is the difference between deactivating a user and freezing a user okay yes. so you can have a look to this video this is already uploaded on the so channel so as we all know in our salesforce there is no option to delete a user so now what if i want to use the license of this user and want to give to another user so in this case what we can do as we have uh, we cannot delete a user from the sales okay uh, either we can go with the freezing of user or we can go deactivation of user okay so terms are different so what happen when we uh, uh, use this keyword freezing then this means we are only stopping a user from being logged in so the license is not going to free we are not going to free up the license here so the user will going to have this license and we cannot use this license for any other user if we are freezing the user okay and in future this user may can come back so we are temporarily suspending the account this user account but when we talk about the deactivation then this this means we are uh, going to free up the license and this license now can be used for the another user also okay and in this we are completely going to suspend the or we are completely going to stop the login of this user and in future this user will not going to come back so these are the few basic questions which are asked in the interview so if you are going for a fresh so if you are a fresher and going for an interview so you can directly go through these questions so obviously they will going to ask you any of the question from these set of questions okay and in the next video i we will going to discuss about the sharing model in the salesforce so already i have also uploaded this in number of parts but now we will uh, i will going to upload this in a one video itself okay so we will discuss the the sharing model also and the different questions related to sharing settings also okay so thanks for watching this video and if you have any queries or any uh, questions related to any of that so let me know in the comment section okay so thanks for watching we'll meet you soon in the next video till then take care goodbye